Hey there, in this lesson we're gonna be building a contact form. Let me show you what we're working with here. So this is a full HTML static form, doesn't do anything right now. We'll come over to the template here, contact, and we just have a form with inputs, just hard coded in here. And now, uh, instead of make the forms are static HTML, we just wrap it with a couple of tags, configure the fields in the control panel, and then it knows what to look for. We can add validation, and so let's just get into it. Um, the first thing we're gonna do is create a form set. Now a form set is basically like a field set, but used on forms. So we'll create a new file and we'll call it contact.yaml. We'll give it a title, contact us. And then we'll define the forms just like a field set. Fields, and we have name. Okay, cool. So now I've got the fields defined. And this, how Statimic uses this is you are explicitly whitelisting the fields you expect to be in the form. So anything that's not one of these fields is not gonna be captured. This way people can't inject extra data uh, or anything into your forms. Next, we're gonna replace the form tag with form create. Make sure you close it. And that will write the form tag for you. It'll set the action to post and it'll post to the correct URL. And we just have to set the form set to use the one we just created, contact. All right, so let's come back over to the form, give the page a refresh, and we'll look at the HTML. Now you can see that we have this tag right here is written, so we've got all that extra stuff done automatically. We have a CSRF token, which it's gonna validate on the other end, uh, which basically prevents um, forms from being submitted off-site because it needs to look for this unique uh, token. And then everything else is in here. So we'll just fill this to form out. Jack, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Yeah, hi. Okay, so we didn't really see anything happen. The page just reset. Uh, so maybe it worked, maybe it didn't, right? Like from a user's point of view. So if we come up here to do, 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 storage, where was it? I just saw it down here. Do, 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 storage. Forms, contact, and then they're stored uh, with a timestamp as their file name. So we can see that information has been successfully posted. So that's good. Now let's come here, let's go to the control panel and just have a quick look in the forms section. Now you can see we have this forms, contact us, we have one response. Take a look at that and boom, we've got all that information available. You can delete it, uh, you can pop open, you know, if you wanna view it in a different format here. Uh, and you can come back here and configure this, some additional stuff. So the control panel actually makes some of this pretty nice. You can set a honeypot field, you can set up any metrics, we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, you can show or not show some of these columns there in the previous index screen. Uh, you also can go through and create the fields yourself, uh, ignoring the files method. But we'll leave that alone for now. Okay, the most important thing to do next is to show a success message or an error message, right? So let's come back to here and do if success... And let's fill that out one more time. And hooray, thanks, great. All right, next let's catch some errors. If errors. You know what, we probably could just do this list. And the only way you're gonna get an error is if uh, something doesn't validate. Come back to our uh, form set and let's make, um, let's make the name required, okay. Now let's make sure, yeah, not required in the HTML. So if we submit this, what happens? Name field is required, cool. What if you wanna have a better thank you page? You don't wanna have them scroll down here. Like what if you want it to show up here? So what will we do then? Well, 
Let me show you. Come up here. And since we're outside, we're outside of that form create tag. Uh, this is actually a plugin tag. So we're gonna need to do wrap that in braces. And then here we'll do hooray, thanks. I'll put this down there and we'll do an else. All right, let's try this again. Oh, form set is required on form tag, right? Contact. So we're looking at the correct one. All right, let's try this again. Um, don't try it. I don't know what's there. I didn't check it ahead of time. All right. Hooray. Thanks. That's pretty cool. That's another way to do that. Mm, here's another option. Right. This is kind of my favorite, actually. This is, uh, you can use uh, a redirect. So why don't we redirect it to contact slash thanks, which happens to be a template that's already been created that has a little thank you content there. So let's just come back over to the site, refresh, Jack, and I don't know why I say my name. Hmm, it's my personal email address. You can email me there, I don't care. And now we've been redirected over here. Now the reason I like redirecting is not so much a static reason, but just like a general workflow. You have a unique URL so that you can go into Google Analytics and set goals even without explicitly um, setting conversion uh, events. So that's just when you have a unique URL that's connected to uh, an event, it just gives you more options, more things you can do. If you're using other tracking services, that stuff can just go in this template as well. So maybe you're using intercom and you wanna you know, do something with a script tag or whatever, um, you can do that. So there you go. That is uh, basically creating a form. It doesn't really have to get any more complicated than that. Uh, so let's move on in the next episode into configuring some metrics and doing some stuff in the control panel and sending an email.